and King Mohammed VI of Morocco have reaffirmed their commitment to fostering deeper bilateral cooperation between the two countries. This was contained in a communique issued at the conclusion of President Buhari's two-day official state visit to Morocco. The two leaders appreciated the significant progress in various areas of cooperation, such as agriculture, fertilizer production, energy, infrastructure, and mining. They also reiterated their commitment to the construction of the regional gas pipeline in the Atlantic through the West African coast that will supply Nigeria's gas to Morocco. King Mohammed further commended President Buhari's leadership in the initiative against terrorism in the Lake Chad region and his effort in the fight against corruption across Africa. While expressing deep concerns about terrorism and the persistence of security threats in Africa, the two heads of states resolved to strengthen cooperation in efforts to combat radicalization in Africa and beyond. Spain has offered to take in a rescue ship drifting in the Mediterranean with 629 migrants on board after Italy and Malta refused to allow it to dock. The rescue vessel carrying 629 migrants was stranded after Italy's new interior minister, leader of the right-wing league, Matteo Salvini, refused the Aquarius ship access, saying Malta should accept them. Malta responded by saying the German charity SOS Mediterranean had picked up the migrants in Libyan waters, which means they fall under Italy's jurisdiction. The Aquarius ship picked up the migrants, including 123 unaccompanied minors, 11 other children and 7 pregnant women from inflatable boats off the coast of Libya over the weekend. Reports say the minors are aged between 13 and 17 and come from Eritrea, Ghana, Nigeria and Sudan. Meanwhile, an increasing number of children migrants have been sent to Niger as countries across Europe and North Africa seek to curtail irregular migration. UNICEF warns that there are insufficient cross-border mechanisms to protect these children from risk like trafficking, violence, abuse, exploitation and detention. Niger, one of the poorest countries in the world, has seen hundreds of men, women and even children cross the scorching desert into Algeria to try and make a living. Seven-year-old Dorcia happens to be one of those children. Although she was taken to Algeria by her father against her mother's will, she has spent four months begging on the streets. Finally, she goes back home. With Algeria saying it can't take any more migrants, Niger has agreed to take them back. Since November last year, more than 8,000 West Africans, including 2,000 children, have been returned to Niger from Algeria. UNICEF is working to reunite children with their families. The agency warns that there are insufficient cross-border mechanisms to protect children from risks of trafficking, violence, abuse, exploitation and detention. Dorcia and her mother, Hazana, see each other for the first time in months in an emotional reunion. I had her in my heart. I spent all my time thinking of her. Hazana had little say when her husband decided to take their daughter away to be a street beggar. Dozia was rescued when she was rounded up by the police. Her father, who was going to be arrested, escaped. Now I will only think of what to make her for dinner. Just our traditional soup with no meat. Her mother, Hazana, says Dorcia will be enrolled back in school. The International Criminal Court has overturned the conviction for war crimes and crimes against humanity of former Democratic Republic of Congo Vice President jean pierre Bemba. Bemba was found guilty in 2016 of crimes committed in the neighboring Central African Republic from 2002 to 2003. He was accused of failing to prevent the killings and rapes by his rebels. But a judge has now said he cannot be held responsible for their actions. Kristen van den Wijngert also said the judges in the 2016 case had failed to take into account his attempts to stop the crimes once he was made aware they were taking place. Bemba's conviction marked several milestones for the ICC. It was the first time the court had focused on rape as a weapon of war and the first time a suspect had been convicted for crimes committed by others under his command. 
Bemba, who has already spent almost a decade in jail, will not be immediately released from detention in The Hague after he lost a separate appeal against the conviction for bribing witnesses. And Mr. Bemba cannot be held criminally responsible under Article 28 for the crimes committed by MLC troops during the car operation. In relation to the remaining criminal acts, it enters an acquittal because the errors found with respect to necessary and reasonable measures extinguish his responsibility in full. The hearing is now. Let's get more on the story from a former ICC prosecutor, Charles Adiogun Phillips. Thanks for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you for having me. So what are your thoughts on the final verdict handed down to Jean-Pierre Bemba? Well, it is certainly um, a severe blow to the operations of the International Criminal Court. As you rightly pointed out, this was indeed a landmark trial uh, based on the responsibility of a superior over the, his failure to prevent his subordinates from, from committing crime. So, I mean, this, this is really um, a major setback um, for that court. But having said that, um, superior, the concept, the legal concept of superior responsibility is extremely complex. Um, and as the trial chamber found, issues of remoteness of the accused to where his subordinates are alleged to have been committing these crimes, uh, his actual and or constructive knowledge of the actions of his subordinates are all um, necessary elements of proving such a sophisticated crime, such as superior or command responsibility. So I'm not terribly surprised at the, the, uh, about this outcome. But what does this mean for subsequent cases similar to this? Will it have any effect on them? Well, it stretches, it stretches and refi redefines the, the, the concept. It's a, it's a very specific and technical legal concept of command or superior responsibility, uh, which involves holding the superior responsible, not for the acts of his subordinates, as, as has been wrongly reported, but rather for his own failure as a superior to prevent his subordinates from committing crimes or to punish them after he has become aware that those crimes were indeed committed. So, I mean, it's a very technical concept. And it, 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 it was the first case at the ICC. I mean, we, we've had several convictions on superior responsibility. I certainly have had several. But the ICC's first test case was this one. It stretches the notion of superior responsibility. And what the, the, the appeals chamber have found is that the remoteness of Jean-Pierre Bemba in one country when crimes were being committed in another country serves to diminish somewhat his responsibility for those crimes added to that the